It's time to ride and rank everything at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Hey there, man fam. It is time for our next installment of the Ride and Rank Everything series. This time we are in Hollywood. This is the series where we attempt to ride and rank every ride park by park, leading up to our ultimate challenge to see how many rides we can ride in just 24 hours across all of Walt Disney World. Now, there are only currently eight rides here in Hollywood Studios, but they're all bangers. They're all bangers. Every single one of them. You got Rise of the Resistance, you got Tower of Terror, Slinky Dog Dash, and many, many more. So it's our toughest challenge yet. We better get to it. Let's get into it. On with the show. Now, as with previous challenges in both Epcot and Animal Kingdom, we are only doing rides. So only moving vehicles or things Disney considers rides. No shows, either live action like Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular or theater shows like Muppet Vision 3D, just rides. And as Alan mentioned, there are currently only eight rides in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Normally there are nine. Rock and Roller Coaster is another banger, but it is down for a lengthy refurbishment through summer 2024 which leaves us with eight to tackle today. First up, we're headed into Toy Story Land to ride Slinky Dog Dash, which we are using Genie Plus today. I booked first thing at 7 a.m. Now we're not gonna get into the weeds with Genie Plus in this video, but we do have Genie Plus guides in each park I recommend checking out. It is especially helpful here in Hollywood Studios because if we haven't said it enough already, there are some very, very popular attractions here and they get very, very long lines. As Molly mentioned, Slinky Dog Dash is our first stop for the day. It is an incredibly popular attraction. So, got up early, booked this first thing. This attraction has a 38 inch height requirement and is considered a nice entry level roller coaster for you and the family. It is themed after, of course, Slinky Dog from Toy Story. And I don't know, my childhood nostalgia is just at an all time high when I go on this attraction because it has a lot of the building sets that I played with as a kid. And now I get to ride them in full size. Cute attraction. Well, isn't that just the rudeness to this best time? It really is. I can see why it's so popular. I can see why so many kids want to take this on as their first coaster. Oh my gosh, this little girl in front of us had never ridden it before and she was screaming at the top of her lungs. I was laughing so hard. And then she got off and she's like, let's go again. But like, it's, it's just a joyous coaster. We love that energy. Leaves me smiling. All right, so where do we rank this objectively? Remember, these first rankings are all objective on the rideability scale. We'll give our subjective individual rankings later. I think on the must ride scale, I'm gonna put this at an eight and a half. I think it is a delightful coaster. I think it is so much fun. It's especially great at night. It's even better, but I have to knock it a little bit just because it usually has such a long line. It's 70 minutes right now, and it's a hard to get lightning lane, and it's really hot in this land if it's during the summer and you're outside and there's no shade really, so. She was all in the outdoors, No, very little shade. So yeah, I, I don't think it's an, a, as high as some other things we're gonna do here, but definitely a banger. Absolutely agree. All right, we continue. Yes, we do. Did you notice that Wheezy was impersonating his favorite stage show here at Hollywood Studios? What? No? Frozen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Brilliant. Got him. Yeah, you got Wheezy. Now, from Andy's backyard to a galaxy far, far away, we are headed to Star Wars. Rise of the Resistance here on Batuu. 
Now, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is a almost 20 minute ride experience, and it is the fancy ride for Disney's Hollywood Studios. So we got up bright and early at 7 a.m. and were able to book this because we were resort guests. But if you are not a Disney resort guest, you can book this attraction as soon as the park opens. And if this is a must ride for you, I recommend you book it as quickly as possible because it is one of the most popular rides in Walt Disney World and arguably the most popular ride in this park. This attraction has a 40 inch height requirement and it places you as a rebel, part of the resistance going against the First Order as you, well, you get out of some hairy situations, maybe involving Kylo Ren, you know, who's to say as you might be taking aboard a Star Destroyer and then having to escape in a harrowing edge of your seat victory, or at least that's what's happened to me in the past. I guess you never really know. The resistance is unpredictable. You're a fine looking group of recruits. Well, no time to waste. Let's get you on your way to the jet. Recruits must be on board now. Transport is away in 30 seconds. There's going to be a number of small craft heading our way. Raise the shields. We have company. First order tie fighters. Reroute. Reroute. That's a 10. That's a 10. That's a 10. That's a 10. Yeah, that's, that's a 15 uh, if we break the scale. That's yeah, that's so good. I get literally teary every single time, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Every time you hear that music and then the whole team makes it out yeah. and it's just like, it's the most unbelievable attraction of Walt Disney World, I think. Must ride at least once. Star Wars fan or not. Yeah, my mom's not a huge Star Wars fan. She's only seen the original trilogy. She called Kylo Ren Darth Vader the whole time, mm. and she still loved it. So you must do it. The technology on that ride alone. Multiple the, ride just, systems. Just, it's the yes. best. Well, I guess we got to go ride some other attractions now. That's true, but I think what we learned besides Rise is the best um, is that we are going to use a fancy ride for Rise in the Big Adventure yeah. because you can only book two fancy rides per day. There's five across Walt Disney World, and Rise normally has a 60, 70, 80 plus minute wait, and yeah. we are on in less than five minutes. So I think this is a, a good must use. Get. Yeah, must a good get. use. Um, but yes, let us continue a galactic adventure. Now we are continuing in the galaxy, but we are actually also leaving the galaxy. We have a lightning lane book for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, but we've got about 25 minutes before we can tap in there. So for the uh, sake of time, we're gonna pop out and do Star Tours, the Adventures Continue TM real quick, which only is a five minute wait, and then we'll come back into Galaxy's Edge to do Millennium Falcon. Star Tours, the Adventures Continue TM is the OG Star Wars themed attraction here in Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it is a 3D adventure where as Alan likes to put it you are put into a shoebox and shaken as you go on an adventure with some of the Star Wars characters. Now what is cool about this attraction is that you never know which adventure you're going to go on. There's over 50 different combinations of beginning, middles, and ends featuring different characters from the Star Wars universe so it has a lot of rewritability if it doesn't make you nauseous like it does for me. And hey Star Wars fans, great news. Starting April 5th they're bringing in even more characters, more fan favorites from Disney Plus shows. I'm talking Baby Yoda. I'm talking Daddy Pedro. I'm talking the guy from Narcos. And I'm talking Mimi from the movie adaptation of Rent the Musical. It has a 40 inch, that's four zero inch height requirement. And it's a great filler ride because it does not usually have a long line. It's only a five minute wait right now. So usually no need to use Genie Plus here. But note that it is my dream to be the Rebel Spy. I've never been the Rebel Spy. They randomly choose one guest in each cabin to be it. And it's never been me. Maybe today's the day. Hey, 
experience that was. That was the best ride ever. We got to see everyone's favorite Star Wars character, Jar Jar Binks. Oops. And most importantly, my dream came true and yes. I was the Rebel Spy! Yes, for the first time ever. In my whole 35 years, which is, if I'm remembering correctly, as long as this ride has existed. Huh. What a dream. Truly. So obviously this is a 10 for you. This is a 10. You must ride Star Trek. No, no. Uh, this ride makes this me want to throw up, but I'm trying to take that out of the equation here. I think on the whole, this ride is a 5 on the must ride I'll scale. That. I'll take it. The fact that you can have multiple different rides with different combinations of places that you visit, the fact that it hits a real deep piece of nostalgia for me, I'm also trying to eliminate, but I think for not only nostalgia for Star Wars, but also for the fact that this attraction has been here for so long. I also think it's a great filler attraction. It usually doesn't have too long of a line. And as far as fillers go, this is a pretty great one, yeah. which is perfect because it's in a park full of so many bangers. You need some stuff to break that up. I also remember loving this ride as a kid, even though I had never seen Star Wars. So yeah, I think a five is perfect. And uh, we're not done with our galactic adventure no, yet. No, we are not. Back to Batu. We, we have asked. Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is, well, while I don't want to speak for every Star Wars nerd, it is at least this Star Wars nerd's dream, and that is to hop aboard the Millennium Falcon. This attraction has a 40-inch height requirement and puts you either in the pilot seat, the engineer seat, or the gunner seat as you work to complete a smuggling mission for Hondo in this fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. This, the ship that completed the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. This, the iconic star for Luke, had a bad feeling about this for the first time. Very bad feeling about uh, this. This, the place where Luke kisses his sister. That that didn't happen. It definitely happens. He definitely Game of Thrones his sister. It didn't happen on this ship. Oh, I'm sorry. It's where Han and Leia kiss for the first time. It's true. You can see the wall. She, he calls her. A, he, she calls him a scruffy-looking nerf bird. Uh huh. Who you call a scruffy? I need flight crews to transport this valuable merchandise across the galaxy. Pilots to navigate, engineers to operate the ship, and gunners to defend the shipments. And that is where you come in. successfully procure one piece of coaxium. I don't want to blame our shipmates, but we were lowly engineers, so we it was not our fault that we didn't get to. Uh, what was your score? 96%. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not as good as 100, which was my score, not to brag, but definitely a brag. Good job. TIE Fighter. Meow. Anyway, the Millennium Falcon is a fun attraction. I think for a die-hard Star Wars fan, this is a must-do. You it's get to, if you're, a, yeah, if you're a die-hard Star Wars fan, 
getting on the Millennium Falcon in any capacity is incredible. For the average guest though, I would put it at, let's say an eight. I can agree with that. I think it's a really fun attraction. I think that it does greatly depend on who you're with. If you fill the whole cockpit, it's a wonderful yeah. time. But if you like go single rider or a smaller group, you're probably gonna get put with other people. It also varies a lot on what position you get. Engineer is definitely the worst position. Pilot is definitely the best position. So there's a lot of variables, but I think it's like, yeah, seven and a half, eight. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Oh, Speaking of single rider, it is a very real option for us in this larger challenge that we're going to take on. However, there are some concerns about time there because we're both going to have to wait for the other individual to go on the attraction. There's a high chance we get separated. Yeah, it's a longer attraction, so having to wait for two cockpits to go through might take a while, but we'll see what happens and how lightning lanes are coming about to us on the big challenge. But for now, uh, Alan fiddle faddled I did. like my young Padawan and got us a very good spot right now for Runaway Railway. So let's go. Is that, that's the babies, right? Did I use that right? I am Anakin. You are my Padawan. Anakin murders Padawan. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is the cutest little attraction located here inside the Chinese theater. It has no high requirement, which I think was very needed in this park full of thrill rides, but it's thrilling in its own way. It's amazing what they do with that trackless technology. I adore this attraction. It's also the first attraction to star Mickey and Minnie, which is boggling to the mind that it took this long. And it's very popular. It's usually got a pretty long wait, 65 minutes right now. So I'm glad we got that lightning lane. That's just such a cute attraction. It's the cutest little ride. Golly. It's not even little, it's huge, it's massive. The scale of it, the technology used on display, the projection mapping, it's amazing. Love it. This might be a controversial take, but for rideability, 10. It's a 10. We got another 10, friends. Now listen, I know that there are a lot of great movie ride fans out there, and listen, I'm one too, but I think it's unfair to fault this attraction just because it replaced great movie ride and is now existing in these hallowed halls. It's a great ride. It's an adorable ride. Obviously, we need a ride for Mickey and Minnie. You need a good family ride in this park, and this is it. I think this attraction is so cute. A must ride for me when I'm in Hollywood Studios. A solid 10. Agreed. Except for Goofy. It's like a 9-9, nine -nine, because you lose a little point for what they've done to Goofy. And we are back in Toy Story Land. Now, you might be thinking, are you here to ride the rest of the attractions? Yes, yes we are. We have Toy Story Midway Mania and Alien Swirling Saucers left to ride in this land. But we're going to pick up a snack first, and I'm not going to lie to you all, I'm a little shocked. I didn't think we'd have time to stop and get a little bite to eat, but we have a, a moment for some sustenance. So that's where we're headed. Fiddle faddled for a soon time at Woody's Lunchbox, the quick service spot here in Toy Story Land, very popular. Woody's Lunchbox is probably best known for their tachos, which are tater tot nachos and absolutely delicious. They've also got a couple of sandwiches, the Lunchbox tarts, which are basically fancy pop tarts, a couple of beverages as well. It is one of my favorite spots to grab something to eat, but know that it is a pretty small spot, so spots are often limited. Additionally, most of the food is hot and there's not a ton of shade out here, so it's sometimes a snack better left for the evening times. Our food has been picked up. I went for the kids meal, which I love to get as a money saving tip. This whole thing's like six, seven dollars. I got half of the grilled cheese, which is the same as the adult grilled cheese. It's just a half portion. And then you get to pick two sides. I picked soup, which is the same size that Alan got with an adult meal. And then I also got a cutie. You could do potato barrels, which is Disney speak for tater tots as well. And then you get a drink. I like the little bottles of water so I can throw one in my bag. Look at this. Look how cheesy this is. A 
It's simple. It's classic. It's a very good grilled cheese. I love the tomato soup. Perfect quick snack. And I have picked up the carved turkey sandwich with lettuce and tomato on multigrain bread. There's also a Dijonese on here as well. I did not go for a hot item because it is hot outside. Tank top season in full effect. Cheers. This is, the bread is very fresh. It's sticking the roof of my mouth. This is just a solid sandwich. It's not gonna blow you away. It is not world changing, but sometimes all you need is a sandwich. And this is what I need right now. For a little bit of sustenance, some protein lettuce, I'm here for it, yes. Okay, a delightful snack consumed, and we are now headed to Toy Story Mania, the first Toy Story attraction to grace the theme parks. This lovely ride has no height requirement and is a shooter style attraction that takes you through a variety of different mini games where you compete against your neighbor. And uh, I'm gonna do great. I am just telling myself I'm gonna do great. It should be noted that the wait times do tend to wax and wane for this attraction, so make sure to keep an eye on it. Like when we walked into the park this morning, the wait time was about 35 minutes. And right now we just tapped in using Genie Plus for our lightning lane, it was about 50. So. It is a good use of Genie Plus, but not your top priority at this park. All right, we did it. I won, but like just a little bit. And you know what? That's okay, because you're colorblind, so I know this game is harder for you. It's fine. Try not to factor that in when we're ranking it. What do you think? Uh, I think objectively, this is a nine I on agree. the writability scale. I agree. Just because not only for writability, but for rewritability, the fact that you can do this game over and over and over again, always improve, get better scores, every day is going to be different. I think this is just an awesome shared family experience as well. Yeah, this is the OG Toy Story ride, and in my opinion, it's still the best Toy Story ride in this park. Not to mention the fact that you've got a shaded and indoor queue. Like we do to, love that. Not to mention the fact that everybody in the family can ride this one, but like Alan said, you can ride it time and time again. It's always a good time. I've ridden this ride a million times, and I'm still also noticing new Easter eggs in this queue. I think this queue is adorable. You're yeah. supposed to be in Andy's room. This time I noticed Andy's closet, which has his little tricircle D ranch shirt on it. I also loved watching you puzzle out the uh, the spell blocks on the way out, where it says you did it, yay! But it's like a U, so I was like, Udi, yeah. Udi, what did it. happened? Um, and then I saw the little like the thing you'd write on, and then you'd lift it up to clear it away, and it had the, oh. the instructions for moving day on it. Like the detail, this this ride is so cute. I think a nine is a perfect score. Final stop here in Toy Story Land, Alien Swirling Saucers. This attraction is incredible, if for no other reason than the giant Buzz Lightyear located right outside of it. But beyond that, this is definitely more of a filler attraction. It's the same ride system as Tomater's Junkyard Jamboree out in Disney California Adventure, or the Happy Ride with Baymax in Tokyo, Japan. It's basically a spinner attraction where you are gonna be on a turntable with the aliens, and as the cars move around, your vehicle spins around. It's a silly little ride. I think it's a lot of fun. My niece, who was three at the time, loved it when she came last. Now it does have a 32 inch height requirement, and the wait time can wax and wane a little bit. Right now it's only 30 minutes, which would be perfect for a filler ride. But on busy days, I have seen it get upwards of 60 plus minutes. Oh, Spanish buzz. Enemy, amigo, amigo. Spanish mode? That happens sometimes. See. Ha <laughs> ha 
right, we swirled and we sauced. I love that ride. It is so silly and fun, and I just giggle the whole time. I think it's great. I think Tomator did it better. That's right. I think Baymax did it best, though. Oh, the happy fun ride? Yeah. Oh. That's mostly because of the cast members. I agree. I agree with that. Um, it's a cute ride. You're going to laugh. I dare you to ride this and not smile. That said, objectively, I think it's a three on the must ride scale. I don't think that this is a top priority for most people. I think it's a nice to do. If you got little ones, it's a good choice. But I think there's so many bangers in this park that this falls towards the bottom. This is just the definition of everything else is a banger and something has to go on the bottom. Somebody has to be the worst and I'm sorry for these little cuties that it's them because I do love them so much. But, sorry, pal. Sorry. Boop. Uh, that said, we've got one ride left. That's it, one more. Let's head to Sunset. Let's do it. For our final attraction of the day, we are walking down Sunset Boulevard to the Hollywood Tower Hotel to ride the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. This spooky attraction has a 40 inch height requirement and it takes you into the Twilight Zone via a service elevator as you relive the tale of the fateful night that lightning struck the Hollywood Tower Hotel. This ride is incredibly popular and it is a good use of a lightning lane when planning your day. Hollywood, 1939. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young movie town at the height of its golden age, the Hollywood Tower Hotel was a... This, as you may recognize, is a maintenance service elevator, still in operation, waiting for you. We invite you, if you dare, to step aboard, because in tonight's episode, you are the star, and this elevator travels directly to the Twilight Zone. Ten. She's a perfect 10. I mean, the imagineering and the detail and the theming on this ride are second to none. It's just so immersive, so delightfully spooky, I just mean, eerie. I love the fact that the elevator moves forward. Yeah, moves you through space in multiple directions, yeah. It's a classic, it's an icon, an absolute must ride. Obviously, if you're deathly afraid of heights, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not for you. But it is like such a great classic Disney thrill ride. Yeah, 10, gotta be. And with that, we have officially finished riding all the rides currently open here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. As Molly mentioned earlier today, Rock and Roller Coaster is currently down for refurbishment until this summer. But if you do want to know what Rock and Roller Coaster is like, well, we didn't want to leave you hanging. Welcome to G-Force Records. There's a wall of marbles right here. You're gonna to want to touch it, but every kid has already, so just don't lick your hand after you do. You're gonna head into the pre-show where you see Aerosmith working on recording their next album. Hey, 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 what's the hey, hey, hey? We can't leave these people here. Come on, you know about how we feel about our fans. Wait a minute, I love that idea. Hey Sal, it's me, I'm gonna need a stretch. As a matter of fact, make it a super stretch. Then you're gonna head out to the alleyway, you're gonna jump into your limo. <laughs> then, as you are loaded into the slingshot and pulled backwards, you're gonna hear five, four, three, two, one! Photo, 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 corkscrew, corkscrew. Now, you're gonna hear in your ears the sweet ticklings of sweet emotion. Or another song by rock band Aerosmith, but for some reason not, don't wanna miss a thing, the soundtrack to 1998's hit cinematic masterpiece Armageddon. You're gonna keep weaving through town, you're gonna see neon signs, there's a big donut there, you're gonna do one more corkscrew before your limo comes to a screeching halt, and you are gonna jump out in front of a car wash called Wash This Way, hilarious joke, most people miss it, don't be one of those people. You're gonna exit out to your right-hand side where you're gonna see Aerosmith performing on some screens, check out your hilarious photo, and of course, exit through the gift shop. See, it's like you were there. Well, that brings us to an end of our Ride and Rank Everything Challenge here in Disney's Hollywood Studios, and I think we did learn quite a bit for our upcoming challenge, though. However, it wasn't super busy here today. The genie gods were in our favor, so it was pretty easy to knock everything out, even these big e-tickets, without a lot of effort. It was almost too easy. Anyway, though, we have already given you the objective ranking on the must-ride scale, so now it is time Wait, for our... Wait, Rock and Roller Coaster? I think a nine and a half, just... Off me if memory serves me correctly. I'd agree with a that. A great attraction. Yeah, no, 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 that works. These are our own personal rankings. They could be influenced by nostalgia or memories we have on these rides, the rides we're most likely to do while we're in the park, the IP we care most about. So take these with a little grain of salt. Alan, what's your ranking? My ranking is number one, 
Rise of the Resistance. Number two, Tower of Terror. Number three, Slinky Dog Dash. Number four, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Number five, Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. Number six, Toy Story Mania. Number seven, Star Tours The Adventures Continue. And number eight, Alien Swirling Saucers. You're gonna see mine is a little bit different in certain places. For me, it goes number one, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Number two, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Number three, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Number four, Toy Story Mania. Number five, Slinky Dog Dash. Number six, Alien Swirling Saucers. Number seven, Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. And number eight, Star Tours The Adventures Continue. Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run and Star Tours are the lowest? Yeah, I like Toy Story way more than I like Star Wars. Alien Swirling Saucers, I think it's cute and never fails to make me laugh. Star Tours makes me incredibly nauseous, and I usually ride Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run as a single rider, which means I'm creeping in the back of some family's memories as the engineer. That ride has the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, but Alien Swirling Saucers makes me laugh every time. Let us know your rankings or your favorite at least favorite ride in this park down below, and we'll see you for the next episode of this series at Magic Kingdom. Oh boy. But until next time, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join the man fam in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, please join us on Discord. Links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Helen. And it has been so magical. It has been. Bye! Bye!